There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise just do it, I go wild. Car 54, where are you? Tonight's program brought to you by Ice Blue Secret Deodorant. Helps keep you cool, calm, dry. And by Lava, the soap that gets hands clean right down to the fingernails. I'm beginning to feel the presence of a spirit. It is trying to speak. The spirit says it was very close to someone in this room. Uh, maybe it's Uncle David. This is your Uncle David. My Uncle David! Uncle David, this is your nephew, Alvin. He needs your advice about money matters. It's about the store. Sell the store. Uh, uh, but Uncle David... When you sell the store, bring the money to Madame Sonia, and she will invest it wisely for you. Uh, but I can't sell the store, Uncle David. The store burnt down. Bring Madame Sonia the insurance money to invest. There isn't any. I let the policy lapse. I had to go on unemployment insurance. Trust Madame Sonia with your unemployment checks. Uh, but last week was my last week on unemployment. What do you have? Nothing. Goodbye, Elvin. But, but Uncle David... The spirits tire very quickly. Not even an unemployment check. Just once, I'd like to be the ghost of a rich, smart nephew. Take it easy. Oh, another bust out. What are we gonna make a big hit? Relax. Oh, I should have known when I was well off. By this time, I could have been ping pong champ at the woman's house of detention. Relax, we'll hit something big. Not around here, we won't. I warned you guys about the Bronx. It's great for pastrami, but lousy for spiritualists. Cheech Blige, there's no money around here. No money in the Bronx, huh? Look at this. Count Dmitry Schnauzer Dostoevsky marries for eighth time. Count Dostoevsky of the famous Marion Dostoevsky brothers was married today to the wealthy Bronx widow, the former Mrs. Selma Krakauer. They're making their home in the Bronx. No money in the Bronx, huh? Think she'd fall for our stuff? She's a perfect pigeon. Any dame to marry a white Russian count today just ain't keeping up with current events. Now, we gotta act fast. A regular routine. That's right. Pinky. Get down to public library. Find out everything you can about the Count and his new Countess. Right. Once we get her up here, we gotta feed that information back to her from the great beyond. Yeah, we get her confidence, and then we give her a phony stock tip from the spirit world. Room service for us for the rest of our lives. We gotta send her a letter. A letter? By the time she gets it, every con man in town will have his hooks into her. Hello, information. Have you got a number for uh, Count Dmitry Schnauzer Dostoevsky? No, I ain't got a Bronx directory. Tell her to look it up in the yellow pages under Bronx royalty. Shut up. <laughs> what? You ain't listening. Well, look, uh, try under Dimitri. And if it's not under Dimitri, try Schnauzer. For the last time, Sylvia Schnauzer, this year we're spending my two weeks vacation at a place that I want to go to. We're going to Atlantic City. Atlantic City. We're not going to Atlantic City. I'm a policeman. I'm on my feet all day. The last thing in the world I want to do is spend two weeks walking on a boardwalk. Leo, it's beyond us. When the gypsy read my tea leaves yesterday afternoon, they said we were going to Atlantic City. We're not going to Atlantic City. Every year we go where the tea leaves, stars, or fortune cookies tell you. Leo, don't fight it. Sylvia, what do I have to do before you listen to me? Sit in the bottom of a teacup and holler up at you? I don't want to go to Atlantic City. Answer it. I got to watch for dinner. Hello? Yes, this is Mrs. Schnauzer. My dear, I am Madame Sonia. I have a message for you. A message from the great beyond. A restless spirit is trying to contact you. A restless spirit? From the great beyond? Her name is... is... <laughs> Celeste. Celeste? Yes, Celeste. Your husband's first wife. Hello, Mrs. Schnauzer? Mrs. Schnauzer! Uh, my husband's first wife? Celeste cannot wait. You must come here first thing in the morning. Now, here is the address. 
Yes. I have it. Yes, yes, yes. I'll be there first thing in the morning. His first wife. He never told me. Sylvia! <laughs> Who was it? Oh, yeah, it was wrong number. I thought maybe it was that gypsy calling from Atlantic City asking what's keeping you. <laughs> now, let's forget all about Atlantic City. Yes, Leo, you're right. The, the tea leaves are silly. I'll go bring in the dinner. I knew you'd come down, Thurry. From now on, when you see tea leaves in the bottom of a cup, you'll get only one message. Wash the cup. <laughs> I made pot roast and potato pancakes. Pot roast and potato pancakes. Leo. Yes, pussycat. Did she make pot roast as good as this? She? You know who. Sure, her. Sylvia, give me a clue what's going on. Just a clue. Forget it. I don't ever want to hear about it again. I won't mention it again, all right? All right. Here's the gravy. Thank you. Leo, is that her face you're seeing in the gravy? <laughs> Sylvia, just a clue, a hint. Tell me, what was she like? Well, for one thing, we know she made great pot roast and potato. Is that what we know? Go ahead and laugh at me. You've been laughing at me for years anyway. Laugh, laugh. <laughs> oh, Leo, I can't fight a ghost. Him. Stop torturing me. I can't compete with a beautiful memory. I had a beautiful memory. This pot roast when it was still hot. Why didn't you come and tell me you were married before? Ah. All right, you got it. I was married to Queen Elizabeth, but we split up when I told her I didn't want my wife to work. All right, are you happy? Oh, lie to me, but don't laugh at me. Once and for all, I tell you, I never had another wife. Believe me, I'm sorrier about it right now than you are. All right. <laughs> I believe you. You never had another wife. Good. What was she like? <laughs> All right, Sylvia. You may as well know. I was once married to Greta Garbo. It was one of those crazy mad cats. <laughs> but when it was over, we promised each other we'd never say a word about our annulment. Right up to now, she's kept her lips sealed, and so have I. That's a lie! A lie? I'll prove it to you. In all the movie magazines you read, in all the gossip columns, did you ever hear Greta Garbo even once mention the name of Leo Schnauzer? <laughs> How about that? You mean Sylvia thinks you were married before? To a woman named Celeste? What was she like? <laughs> That's just what Leo finished explaining. Sylvia thinks he was married before to a woman named Celeste. I heard him. I heard him. Good. What was she like? <laughs> Do I need this? Do I need this? I fly from one cuckoo nest to another one. Gunther, Schnauzer was never married before. Then who's Celeste? I'll tell you who Celeste is. Celeste is a name my wife is using to drive me crazy. All night long, she kept going through all my pictures, all my papers, all my letters, waking me up every five minutes asking me, did you love her more than you love me? Leo? What? Did you? <laughs> Doctor, keep quiet. Leo, where could Sylvia have gotten the idea that you were married before? Where? Where does Sylvia get all her ideas? Where did she get the idea she could swim the English Channel? <laughs> For over two months, I didn't know the inside of my own bathroom. She kept training in the bathtub. <laughs> I'm going out of my mind. I don't know what to do. Leo, what? If you're not happy with Sylvia, why don't you go back to your first wife? <laughs> Will you shut up? Look, Leo, Sylvia just happens to have an overactive imagination. But if you're worried, I have a suggestion. Anything, anything. The Police Medical Bureau has an excellent psychiatrist, Dr. Mitchell. His office hours Forget are... Forget it! But Leo, psychiatrist... Look, I'm as modern as the next man, but all this business with the couch and the notebooks, that's not for Sylvia. But if you're worried about Sylvia... Look, I'll handle Sylvia my way. How? With facts. I'll get her affidavit showing I was never married before. I'll go to City Hall. I'll go to the Hall of Records. Leo. What? Why'd you do it the easy way? Why'd you just have her talk to Celeste? <laughs> Gunther, there is no such person as Celeste. This is Celeste. 
excuse me, Celeste, but are you sure you were married to my husband? Am I sure? Oh, how we loved each other. He swore he could never be happy with another woman. That's him. <laughs> oh, how I loved him. Everybody in St. Petersburg loved the gayest, most romantic member of the Russian nobility, Count Schnauzer. Count Schnauzer? Foolish, high-strung aristocrat. He always had the best in life, the finest champagne. But you must not trust him with money matters. Let Madame Sonia handle all your financial affairs. A count? <laughs> and you, my dear, are a countess. I'm a countess? <laughs> Sylvia! Sylvia! Okay, Sylvia, we're gonna straighten everything out right now, and I got all the facts here to do it. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Make my house blue eyes and sing. Did you get that, Sylvia? Sing. Now, now here's my grandma. <laughs> Sylvia? The Countess awaits Count Schnauzer's command. Count Schnauzer. May I rise? What can we lose, rise? Forgive me for not realizing you were of Russian nobility. You're forgiven. How could I have not recognized the nobleness by the way you've accepted this squalor after your palaces, your estates, your peasants? That's the way the cookie crumbles. Oh, I must miss those mad nights in St. Petersburg. The dancing gypsies, the wild sleigh rides. Don't remind me. And to think, my beautiful Count, if you had known me then, I would have been presented to the Tsar. Take care of that right now. I'm going to call the Tsar. The Tsar? Yes. I wonder what his office hours are. <laughs> You say it's your wife, Sylvia? My wife, Sylvia. You can just fill me in. Well, you know how some people think they're Napoleon? Yes. Well, I'd settle for that. <laughs> Look, Dr. Mitchell, who knows what she's gonna be next? You've gotta come home with me to see for yourself. Well, I've, I've got a full schedule. You've gotta see it to believe it, Doctor. I know. Come home with me tonight for dinner. Dinner? Yeah. Who knows? If we're lucky, tonight she may be Marie Antoinette and we'll eat frog's legs. Go on, go on. And just when I make contact with my Uncle David, Madame Sonia won't let me talk to him anymore. And she charged you $10 a visit? Yes, until I ran out of money. Do you think that's why I can't talk to my Uncle David anymore? Very probably. Mr. Brooks, you've run into a confidence mob using spiritualism as a gimmick. You sent for us, Captain? Yes, uh, excuse me. There's a phony spiritualist outfit operating in your sector. Here's the address. Now, one of you will have to get into plain clothes, request a seance, and get the evidence. One of us? Yes, now, we don't want to get suspicious. They prey on stupid, gullible, simple-minded people. <laughs> well, here's what you'll have to do, Tootie. <laughs> when Madame Sonia starts the seance, tell her you want to speak to the spirit of your Uncle Walter. Yes, sir. The spirit of my Uncle Walter. Ooh. I never had an Uncle Walter. What's the difference? I had an Uncle Henry. Maybe I could ask to speak to him. All right, all right. You'll speak to your Uncle Henry. Get going. What's the matter? I just remembered. I don't think my Uncle Henry will talk to me. He never talked to me while he was alive. Your Uncle Henry was a wise man. Could he believe me? If you give this Madame Sonia $10, your Uncle Henry will talk to you. Just think of something to ask her. I don't want to ask him. I'm going to ask him why he didn't talk to me while he was still alive. Anything, just get going. Maybe I could... Got there. Come on. Oh, wait. What is it? When you talk to your Uncle Henry, will you ask him if he knows my Uncle David? Sure thing. <laughs> Smart cop. Madam Sonia, I must speak to Celeste. I must find out what I did wrong. What you did wrong, Countess? Yes. When I recalled to my husband, the Count, about his days in St. Petersburg, he quick made a phone call and ran out of the house. She spilled the Count. No. Oh. Shut her up. We'll have the Count on our neck. My dear, you must never tell a third person that you are communicating with a spirit. It will break the contact. You must pretend you know nothing. Yes, I know nothing. I know nothing. Yes, I'll deny everything. <laughs> now, 
I'll come home like I do every night and watch what happens. Remember, just be very calm with her and introduce me as a casual friend. Right. Just keep an eye on her and put everything down in your notebook. This case will make you famous. <laughs> Sylvia, I'm home. I brought a casual friend for dinner. <laughs> She's dressing. Get your book ready. This could be anything. Oh, hello, Leo. How do you do, sir? How do you do? What's with the dress? What should I wear around the house? What should you wear? I told you I'm bringing home the Zao. <laughs> Where's your tiara? What have you done? Sold out to the Bolsheviks? <laughs> Excuse me, I'll put on the hamburgers. Stop! Hamburgers for a count? That's what I get for marrying beneath my station. Get the hamburgers to my horses. I'll go fix dinner. Stop. Is that the way you leave the royal presence? You back out bowing, always bowing. Yes, your highness. Do you see what she's doing, Lisa? Put it down, write it down. Can I go fix dinner? Stop. Can you go fix dinner? What's the matter with you tonight? Don't you understand? The Count is home! The Count is home! <laughs> Bring on the balalaika band. The gypsies are here to play. They're at the palace gate. Show them in. The gypsies? Show them in. Show them in! Come in, gypsies! See what she's doing? Put it down. Put it down. Ah, oh, welcome, gypsies! Step right in! Play, gypsies! Dance, gypsies! We'll dance through the night, gypsies! Here you are! I'll tell you well, gypsies! Right. If that schnauzer dame blabbed the count schnauzer, he'll have the police on us. Police? Dostoevsky brothers don't work that way. When one of them's in the spot, the other goes to bat for him. If he's suspicious, he'll send his brother Sergei to try to get the goods on us. That must be him. But let's get out of here. Stop. It could be anybody. Answer him. <laughs> no. Quick, give me a rundown on the brother. Black hair. Brown eyes, five foot eight, round face, smart as a whip. He's got a stupid look that throws everybody off. I want to talk to my Uncle Henry. Uh, it's him. Let's get out of here. Wait. Get back in there and look up all the dope on him. Sal, Sal, that guy out there. Quiet! He wants to talk to his Uncle Henry. He's trying to get the goods on us. We'll make a believe out of him. Let him in. His childhood nickname was Goo Goo. He and his brother were smuggled out of Russia during the revolution. Got all the dope? Yeah. Oh, friendly spirits, a believer is here. Get on the mic. Oh, spirits in the great beyond, there's someone here who wants to communicate with you. I'd like to talk to my Uncle Henry. <laughs> Speak, oh, spirit from the great beyond. Oh, <laughs> oh. Who's that? It is your grandfather. My grandfather? Yes, Gugu. This is your grandpa, the Grand Duke Alexander of Russia. But my grandfather was a street car conductor. Street car conductor. <laughs> ah, the gypsies who smuggled you out of Russia, did they work well? The gypsies? Yes, to protect you from the Bolsheviks. They raised you as their own and kept your royal past a secret. How about that? Where is your brother? My brother? I never had a brother. Your brother was given to another band of gypsies. He was? You and your brother are all that is left of the Dostoevsky dynasty. You must keep yourselves prepared for the counter-revolution and you return to the throne. I'll return to the throne. <laughs> oh, brother, you sure nailed those phonies, Gunther. They actually told you you're a Russian count who was smuggled out of Russia and raised by gypsies in this country? Yeah, yeah. That's the stupidest thing as I've ever heard. Come to think of it, my mother used to wear earrings. <laughs> 
Imagine you, Gunther Tootie, a member of the Russian nobility. Ah! What's so funny? You know something, Francis? I can't speak Russian, but when Khrushchev spoke in the UN, I understood every word he said. Now, how do you account for that? You listen to an interpreter. <laughs> I forgot. Now, you remember everything they told you? We got to make out a report. Yeah, everything. Leo, what's come over you? You stop a man going 70 miles an hour and you give him a ticket for double parking. You arrest a bank president for vagrancy. After who can think my wife's got me talking to myself? Leo, I... Captain Block. What? That's right, Captain. He thinks he's Count Schnauzer of Tsarist Russia, one of the grandsons of the Grand Duke Alexander. He's living in a world of gypsies, balalaikas, sleigh rides through the snow. Just humor him until I can get over there and put him under observation. Of course, of course. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry I had to speak harshly to you. Don't be sorry. It's what I needed. Somebody to finally talk sense to me. Your Excellency is too kind. A thousand pardons for raising my voice in the presence of your Imperial Highness. <laughs> I beg your pardon, Captain. I think I still hear voices from my house. How are things in the Winter Palace? St. Petersburg is lovely at this time of the year. Excuse me, Captain. Have you been talking to my wife? The Countess? Yes, the Countess. Lovely woman, the Countess. Watch out. I think the Tsar has his eye on her. I know, but I think Napoleon got to her first. <laughs> I've got to get dressed to go home. Who knows what the Countess may be up to? Wait until your victorious return to Moscow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Leo. You were right about those spiritualists, Captain. Wait until you hear what they told Gunther. Uh, please, boys, not now. We've got a terrible problem with Schnauzer. Schnauzer? What's wrong with Schnauzer? Nothing, except he thinks he's one of the grandsons of the Grand Duke Alexander of Russia. <laughs> he's Count Schnauzer, darling of the Tsar. What a coincidence. That's just what the spiritualist told Gunther. Gunther, tell the captain what... <laughs> Hi, Leo. Hi, Gunther. Leo, do you mind if I talk to you? Oh, please do. It'll be a pleasure to talk to somebody who is down to earth. Go ahead. <laughs> Leo? Yes, Gunther? There's something I gotta tell you. What? I'm your brother. <laughs> it's true, Leo. I was just talking to Grandpa, the Grand Duke Alexander. <laughs> Leo, it's true. I'm Goo Goo. I was followed by gypsies just like you are. All your gypsies took you to the Balkans, and mine went by the way of Odessa. Leo, Grandpa says we're the last of our line, the last hope of Russian nobility. The Bolsheviks have taken our estates, our peasants, our palaces. They'll ruin everything we knew and loved. Throw over my dead body. That's my brother. We'll raise an army. We'll win back the motherland. We'll open our palaces again. The balalaikas will play and the gypsies will dance. Ah, here are the gypsies. Play gypsies. And Dr. Mitchell says they're going to be all right? Yes, all we have to do is keep driving them around the familiar surroundings until they come out of it. Is everything all right with your Imperial Highnesses? Yeah. 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 
Tonight's program brought to you by New Push Button Lilt, the only home permanent that waves your hair with foam. And by Gleam Toothpaste, with a patented GL70 formula. There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do it out of wild. Car 54, where are you?